talking about productive and destructive friends, mm. what would you have instilled in that child for the child to know that, okay, this kind of a person is not who you want to hang out with? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it's as simple as knowing right from wrong. You know, um, a child knows what is wrong, I tell you. But the problem with um, school life is peer pressure. So with peer pressure, they want to just follow the Joneses or they want to be a part of a group or they want to be a part of a clique. And it's really important to identify with your child's characteristics. The moment your child is being quiet at home, ask them, what, you know, begin to study your child very well. Children change their characteristics very easily because they have been influenced. And when they're quiet like that, they're getting, you know, all things are going on in their mind. They can't tell you or they won't tell you or they're looking for someone to tell. But be vigilant. Don't say, oh, he's now quiet. He used to be rough and all that before. Now he's quiet. It means something is up. Make it a point of duty at that point in time to go back to the school once in a while to know how your child is doing. So your child knows a productive person when he or she is getting results. So for example, he, moves, he or she moves around people who are always first, second, third in the class. <clears throat> Obviously, that's a competitive spirit and therefore they're more productive and it gears the child to wanting to work. Or your child moves around kids who are backbenchers. That's destructive. And then you get to find out that your child is not doing very well because the child is not listening. The child is being distracted by other people. So you identify some areas where you know are good and where they are bad, and your child can make a decision. You know, most of the kids today, even four-year-olds, assume that they're adults, that they know more than us. Mm -hmm. You know, even four-year-olds know a whole lot more. Mm -hmm. But we shouldn't take it for granted. You know, and then again, I say study your child because unfortunately, bullying is on the uprise. So the moment your child begins to change and is quiet, going back to school or starts beginning to feel fidgety about going back to school, something is up. Doesn't want to meet certain people or, you know, it's, it's their, their telltale signs and their red flags. I think as a parent, it's very important that we begin to understand our own child. You know, don't wait till end of term and the, and, the, and the teachers are telling you some of the things that you ought to have known about your child. You say, my child? Never. It's not possible. Hello. It's been going on for a while and you just haven't noticed you've been so busy. So it's not easy being a parent and being a, <clears throat> a working parent for that matter, trying to build your own career and trying to have your family stable. It's going to take a lot of balance and juggling. But I think it's very important for you to catch your children while they're young. Because when they're beginning to, you know, cultivate traits, it becomes extremely difficult to wear them off. Okay, mm. let's look at back to school for the school itself. Yes. Yeah. I know a lot of schools, you know, there'll be paintings and all of yes. that. Beyond that, what can the school also put in place? Yes. To ensure that the students coming back, you yeah. know, they're coming back to... I think what is key back. for any particular school is to make sure that the ambience of the school is conducive for child, child learning. You know, um, I love walking into school when I see pictures on the wall and I see things that are educative. So you see letters on the wall, you see pictures on the wall, you see the children's art on the wall. You know, you're encouraging the children to do more because their work is being displayed and it gives them a boost for learning. Okay, that's first. Ambience is key. So make it very conducive for the children as best you can, depending on your locality. All right? Ambience is key for the children. Um, make sure that the, pe the, the teachers themselves, of course, it is more than necessary that you get qualified teachers, okay, you know, to we'll, we'll qualified come back teachers. And talk, making sure that the teachers themselves are well equip equipped and well prepared for the kids. So, as a teacher, no matter what your inhibitions are, be ready for the kids that are resuming. But I think what is very key for a school is to ensure that the communication between the school and the parents is apt make sure that the, ki the parents are completely informed all the time. And like you said, maybe they need a WhatsApp group so that they're in touch with the parents. Parents need to be informed at all times about what's going on in the school, what the term has for them, what is needed or expected of them. Communication is yeah, absolutely key. Sorry. Is this for public schools or private schools? Any school, well. <laughs> <laughs> because I mean, how do you expect yeah. a teacher in a public school who has probably, who probably has like a minimum <laughs> of like 60 students in his or her class? Yeah. To be able to communicate with 60 parents as you can with teaching and all the other things. And well, 
it's, it's about having a platform where important messages go out and that nobody can give an excuse that they didn't hear. Because sometimes, back in the days, they would print letters, all right? Kids will lose the letters. They'll throw the letters away. The letters are in their bag or they're not in their bag. And most times, parents will say, well, I didn't get that letter. You know, there has to be another means. It could be email. It could be anything. You know, what works for, for the parents? And depending on the school, like you rightly said, you know, um, they should let the parents know when open days are. There are some schools out there that tell you, if you made up your mind to be a parent, make sure you're at the parents' the open day or the parent-teachers' meetings. You know, that's the best way you know what's going on in the child's school anyway. Maybe that and, should be one of the resolutions of some parents. Yes, make sure that you try. Very important. Open day is very important. Parent-teachers' days are very important. That's when you get to know what's really going on in the school. And you may not even be available all year round. Maybe it is Madame that is available. But once in a while, as a father, try and make sure you try and bounce yourself in some of those meetings. I once had a friend who was living very, very far away from where her, her kids were, um, where her husband worked. So she was on the mainland and he was on the island. And the school was on the mainland. He never had time for what was going on in the kids' lives. He would leave home while they're still sleeping. He would get back home while the kids have gone back to bed. So she decided to move the school all the way to to the island so that the kids will follow dad to school and talk about school mm -hmm. while yeah, they're in the driving. traffic okay <laughs> and more importantly that was his best opportunity to attend parent teachers days because he was closer to the school and it worked like magic so you know it, it's it's about a decision to be part of your child's life and don't leave everything to the last minute and it's not easy to be an executive as well but sometimes one way or the other begin to draw closer to your child's education you know, so that you, you have a fair idea of what's going on. Most times parents, we parents, we're so busy, we just don't, we miss the boat. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's a thin line between success and failure. So, <laughs> and I, as I always say, this is the time to start. This yeah, is a, a yeah. new term. Absolutely. When it's time for prize given day, yes. you want to be called Absolutely. up to the podium. So you need to prepare That's now. My son. That's yeah. my daughter. Mm. Well done. And yeah. for parents, you, you'll be proud. Yes. You know? And then for Absolutely. the child, it yeah. will but be But you know, it doesn't come on a platter of gold. No. So it means as a parent, we've got to work at it. There's parenting etiquette, and it applies to every one of us. And it doesn't matter if your child is 20 something, it's still the same thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank yes, you so absolutely. much for coming Thank on this so morning, much, Janet. Thanks. We've been talking about back to school, what we all need to do as parents, as teachers, at uh, the school, just everyone, what we need to do. Thank you once more for coming. Tomorrow. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs>